Ready to sell this uh, to uh, sell shit. <laughs> Take two. <Yeah>. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to go great, man. All right, hey. We're gathered here today for the Harvey Phillips Festival of Light that we're going to celebrate tomorrow. So Jim and I and Winston are here. We thought it a good idea to uh, speak about our involvement with the formation of TUBA. And I think the most influential person is Mr. Winston Morris, who was there from the start. And uh, yeah, know, well, what, what's going on? So there? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. There's uh, several histories floating around out there. Some are more definitive than others and everything. Um, it, this whole thing came about, of course, Bill Bell, every time he would show up in New York after he had left New York, when he'd go back, and even when he was there, go to a place called McSorley's Ale House, and all the tuba players, if they knew he was in town, that next thing you know, there are 25, 30 tuba players in there having a party, and of course, they had their famous name, which I won't go into. And H. Uh, uh, Robert Riker, Bob Riker, who had been an Indiana University tuba student, had, had just finished at IU, and he was became the tubist in the Montreal, up in Montreal, and he was teaching at the school. I can't remember the name of the school up there. You guys remember McGill? McGill. McGill. Yeah. And so he and some of his students said, "Well, let's form a tuba club like what they were doing at McSorley Zale House." And so they said, "Okay, fine." And, uh, and they got the students, and Bob Rocker was really the, the, the major impetus behind this whole thing. And he got um, a couple of the manufacturers back in those days, Charlie Ford, you guys remember that name? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if Charlie was working with, with Anton Meinl at that point. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, he was. Because this was like 67, 68. It, it was Getson still. Was it, was it Getson? So Charlie Ford threw in a hundred bucks or something, said it's a hundred dollars and you can do a mailing. So Bob Rocker sent out letters to a whole bunch of people and put advertisements in a couple of like the Music Educators Journal or the NACWAPI National Association of College Wind, Wind and Percussion Instructor Journal say, we're going to start a tuba thing. And uh, I don't know, I mean, hundreds of people responded to that. I mean, he had, you know, 150, 200 responses to that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if either one of you guys well, I remember something vague. Yeah. I was, in the army. Yeah. We were in the army at the time. Involved at that particular point. Well, I immediately got in touch with him. And because uh, uh, Mr. Bell and I, Bill Bell, who had been my teacher at Indiana University, we had just done a book called the Encyclopedia of Literature for the Tuba, very presumptuous title, which we didn't give the title, the publisher did. But I just done this book called Encyclopedia of Literature for the Tuba, and Bob Riker had that book. He said, well, that's going to be the Bible of the organization here. And so I got involved with Bob Riker at that point, where he just right, at, right after that, he sent the letter out. And uh, from there, you know, we just sent out letters and stuff. The next thing you know, we said, okay, the really most logical place to really get together is at the Midwest Convention in Chicago. Chicago centrally located. People go there for the for the Midwest Clinic. Jake's there. Bill Bell always went there. And and then people would just crowd around these guys. So we said, well, we had these early tuba meetings. Now you guys are already involved yeah. in this, you know. So we had these early meetings in Chicago at the Midwest. Uh and TUBA, at that particular point, known as Tubus Universal Brotherhood Association, Bob Riker gave it the name. And uh, so our earliest thing was meeting in Chicago during the Midwest Clinic. And then Jake would be there, Bill Bell would be there. We got Harvey involved in that. I think I met Harvey. Well, I already knew Harvey, but we got together like in like 1968 or 69 and one of those meetings in Chicago. And then Harvey became very actively involved with it. And then we ended up putting all these other people and ultimately, this this coalesced at that 1973 first international tuba symposium that we had here in Bloomington, Indiana, at Indiana University. Uh, I'd already done a preliminary constitution before that, uh, that with Bob with Bob Riker and Les Varner, mm -hmm. and we met in Muncie, Indiana, at Ball State, because Riker was coming from Montreal and I was coming from Tennessee. And Muncie happened to be in the middle. So we met in Muncie, Indiana. We spent about three or four days, night and day, seriously, seriously working on a constitution. We studied the constitutions of a couple of other organizations, and we put together a preliminary constitution that we uh, said, okay, as soon as we have this first international tuba conference, we will tweak it, and then we'll get a vote on it. And that's what we did. So in 1973, mm -hmm. we worked on the constitution again. We tweaked it. And we had this big vote on one it. One question. It started in McSorley's. How much did beer 
And was how, how important was beer well, in the beginning? Well, that, that was that was the most single most important thing. It was even more important than the tuba yeah. at McSorley's. We went there, Jim, and, and you know, and, and <laughs> you have, to, we have to buy two beers. You yeah. can't buy one beer. At yeah. But if you didn't yeah. have any money, and a lot of the guys were poor, I mean, Bill Bell would pay. Bill for Bill Bell would pay. You could you could you go into McSorley's and 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 uh, here's a beer, and they always had cheese. Remember? <laughs> And then I, I remember Harvey sitting there, and he liked onions. So he had a plate of onions yeah. and a couple beers. And, you know, people would just sit there and get together. It was a nice little, you know, nice little visit. We were, I mean, I was studying with Harvey at the time in New York, and you and I would go up there and have a lesson, which meant you'd spend the whole day with Harvey. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and he would take you out to some of his gigs and recordings, right. and then you sit there and play duets. And I remember specific things about this whole business. This is where I got involved. And he, he just said to me, he says, you know, there's a movement coming on here. And he says, I think you ought to be teaching. I mm -hmm. really want you to do that. Mm -hmm. And I took him serious at that. Mm -hmm. I said, well, gee whiz, that's all right. Let's see what happens. And without, you know, without that New York Brass Quintet, actually none of us would have a job. Because what it did was that... Uh, they started hiring tuba players because everybody thought, well, at Illinois and where I was, they said, hey, we'll have a faculty brass well, quartet. Faculty brass it's a lot it. cheaper than right. the other stuff, and we can recruit some tuba players for mm -hmm. our band. And that's how it started. I think all of our jobs, yeah. all of our jobs were related yeah. to that. Virtually every tuba gig in this country owes it to Harvey Phillips. That's right. As far as uh, tuba gigs, as far as academic is, is concerned. Because if it wasn't for the, for the quintet, so uh, nothing against the American Brass Quintet, but if they had become the predominant uh, instrumentation, uh, there would not be near as many tuba positions. No, a, any any school of any caliber wants to have a string quartet, a woodwind quintet, and, and a brass, brass quintet. quintet. Yep. Now, what you got to understand, the years that we are talking about here, 1965, 66, 67, there were only two tuba positions, full-time tuba positions. That's right. Rex Connor at the University of Kentucky. But that was wasn't the first time, though. That was, I mean, that, he didn't teach tuba. He taught everything else. I mean, not only tuba, but everything Yeah, else. he taught some the low brass stuff, but I mean, that and then Bill, Bill Bell was hired here, I think in 1962. Yes. I came in 64 to study with That's him. right. Those are the only two tuba positions, full-time tuba positions in the country. <laughs> and then, of course, late 60s, it, it, because of Harvey Phillips and the quintet, and the instrumentation of the, of the standard instrumentation becoming two trumpets, horn, trombone, and tuba rather than a bass trombone, thanks to Harvey Phillips and the New York Brass Quintet, mm -hmm. that we all owe our jobs to Harvey That's for right. that for that reason, you That's know. Right. And all, so all of that was just was part of the the motivation to get TUBA, an organization going called TUBA, and we had that first conference here in 1973, and. Uh, let, uh, well, Rob, Bob Riker and myself, I think Les at that point was not involved. I don't really remember. We, we no, redid let, the Constitution, let, 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 and at that point, we also said we we're going to include the tenor tuba. And so I remember we had the big meeting, and this was in Mac. It had just been completed, the Musical Arts Center. Mm -hmm. We had the big meeting, and uh, I think it was Earl Lauder that got up and says, Well, you know, that sounds great. We would like to be included, but let's call it euphonium. You know, because that's what we refer to ourselves as euphonium rather than... And I just was adamant about including the euphonium as part of this organization because I felt like it needed to be in there. And I've always fought for the euphonium being a very integral, very important part of that because I felt like they need, it's part of the tuba family needed sure. to be in there. So we voted and approved that constitution at that point. And that's when we had a national... Uh, for, temporarily, there was an international TUVA, which didn't amount to hardly anything, and a national thing. And it was a couple of years later that, that I rewrote the Constitution to just make it one thing. And our first president is sitting right here. And uh, I think the only reason I got elected is Harvey got sick at this convention. Well, no, Harvey, what, he, 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 would, he would want to be on the sidelines of this no, to but, some but, extent. But, but he was... He was uh, he got sick at this convention at 73, and you and I... Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. He, Harvey what, got... What happened? He had a bleeding ulcer or he something. He was in the hospital before the... the we put him, we put him in a hospital, and... Jeff, did you come to that as a kid? You were just a, a germ at that point. I was a germ. Yeah. He had hair back then, I think. <laughs> Not much. I didn't either. You know, Harvey got sick halfway through. It was in the hospital. And then so, so Dan and I and G.R. Davis I, basically I stepped, took over the day and, and, and took it over, and I mean, yeah. you, you had no idea of the uh, what he had going on. You know, that's my first... 
you are going to have to pull people off the stage at the convention because it was going to run a little bit longer, you know, go on talking to right. some of these guys. And frankly speaking, you know, everybody sort of listened to us. It was really it went well. well. It went, it went really well. well. And and I remember having to substitute, like, we commissioned Ludus back then, and it was supposed to be, Ludus was supposed to be played by me, Harvey, and uh, Les Varner, right? Well, it ended up to be, I don't know who, I think I got Tucci to step in at the last minute and, and had to, uh, not only about conduct us, just to pull that yeah. performance yeah. off. I mean, it was things like that. Right? The, the Gunther Schuler was written, was to be premiered yeah. there, and I get a, a woken up at five in the morning said, and said, hey, you're playing Harvey's part. That's right. Yeah. And, I, and, and at eight o'clock, we rehearsed, we rehearsed all day, and at open rehearsal in the afternoon and premiered it that night. And at that time, it was scary hard. Well, yeah. hard anyway. it's still scary hard. Yeah. That first two <laughs> part uh, sitting up on high, what, B, 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 B flats, A flats, and yeah. A's and B flats? Yeah. For the, um, and that was Toby Hanks and me and uh, Sam Palafian mm -hmm. and uh, 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 oh, I think from, guy from Ohio, uh, Youngstown. Whaley. No, Whaley. No. John Turk. Oh, John Turk. You got John Turk. That's right. John Turk. So anyway, that's why things happen. So I wasn't at the meeting, I guess, and that's kind of how I got elected. Right?